Hi, everybody. Welcome to our weekly Dream Achievers call. Tonight, our topic is on sponsoring, and Adrian Swanson, who's been number two in sponsoring from the entire company, is going to be joining us shortly. Angie, by the way, cute haircut. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, look at that natural curl. <laughs> so we be short. Oh, it's cute. Thank you. You need to take care of my best. Well, before we get into the topic at hand, and we're going to talk a little bit about a couple things I have back here, let's share victories. It's always fun to share victories. Who wants to start, big or small? I went to a vending show and introduced Tasteful Simple to a whole bunch of people. In Montana? Yeah. How was it? It was fun. It was, um, the town was called Trout Creek. Trail what was the name? Trail Crick. Trout Crick. Oh, cool. Oh, Trout Crick. Say that yeah. again. Is that a Minnesota trout? So she's in Montana now. I'm I know, Montana, but it sounded like a Minnesota trout. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Ange. <laughs> I, had, I just couldn't. I'm so sorry. Well, she is a Minnesota girl. Didn't she grow up in Minnesota or North Dakota, Mel? I grew up in North Dakota, but lived in Minnesota also. Yeah, you're right on the border. Well, anyway, so what was the response in Montana in your neck of the woods? Were they like, what's that? Or that's so awesome or what? They thought it was really cool. So which was kind of nice to, you know, hear about. Um, they are having some more vending shows coming up. They have like Christmas vending bazaars are called. And so there's like six of them coming up here in, in my area. So, so yeah. There you go, Mel. Yeah, it'll be easy to get it easier to get into vendor shows, you know, and they're yeah. like, and they're like 15 bucks to get in to, to get <laughs> yeah. a boot. Nice. Well, you so. can't, can't complain about that. Well, keep us posted, Mela, and good luck on your, your vendor event. All right. Who else wants to share a victory? Mel Sharon Tastely Simple in Montana. Well, who else? <coughs> God, you guys. <laughs> I, know, I know it's Monday night, but everybody looks like kind of grumpy or tired. I mean, I know Monday night stuff. No other victories in the month of November. I can't believe it. I booked, I um signed up five during that thing. The, so that was cool. Yeah. That's during that thing, the spinning thing. Angie, congratulations. And how did you do that, Angie? <laughs> I just, um, I went through all my past hosts for like the last year, year and a half and sent them a message. Yeah. And then I went live real quick in the morning too. So that got one. And then the rest were just past hosts. Well, they yeah. all were hosts. Yeah. yeah. That is so awesome. Yeah. So five new team members. You got to love it. Yeah. Congratulations team. We sponsored a 14 on that one day spin thing. So that's, that's great so to have that new energy. So yeah. Congratulations to everybody. Anybody else want to share victory? Okay, I have one to share. I'm just looking for my, okay, here it is. Okay, this is what I'll show you. Okay, raise your hand if you do vendor events. Okay, so some of you I can't see you, but most of you do. Okay, so you've heard me talk about these things, right? What are they called? Contact slips. Mm -hmm. So this was an idea I got from Anna McArdle, as we know, sister consultant. And sometimes I, or in the past, sometimes I do those big door prize drawings and I've noticed through the years that less and less people sign up and half the time you can't read what they wrote. So Anna said, this is what I do. And I did it over the weekend and I thought it was a great idea. I got a lot of them and I think there's 10 here, maybes or yeses. So at checkout, when they're checking out, I say, thank you for your order. I'm doing a door price to everybody that's ordered this weekend or this day because I appreciate your business would you like to fill this out and be part of the $25 gift certificate that I'll be giving out everybody except maybe two people did it or three or four what you know I get it some people don't want to do it but out of that then it was really easy for me I think there's 10 here to say hey what about an online party or, you know, would you do an, an in-person tasting party? So I've got follow-ups. I should have got to it today, but I didn't. So it was a really easy way. And then the biggest thing is make sure you can read the email. 
Has that ever happened to you? Oh my gosh, you get all these emails and you're like, I don't even know what it says. But what do you think about that idea, you guys? Could you see yourself doing that? Totally. Yeah. Like Did you just use the one from Tastely Simple? Well, it's 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 a little bit customized and I it, I use it as a tablet. I mean, I rip it off. I mean, that's just what I make as tablets. They're, it's on the Dream Achievers page, Ange. Okay. It might be a little different, but yeah, I just make, I go to the print shop and they make tablets. I rip it off and then I just kept it in this cute little thing by my checkout. I just happened to have it. And I just have to thank Anna for that idea because it was brilliant. And it was a really easy way to say, hey, how about an online party or a tasting party? Because they're filling it out anyway. Oh, yeah, I'll do 20, $25. And funny, the person I had my husband draw is, um, said she'd do a tasting party. So anyway, that's pretty exciting. Very. Okay. I encourage you to do it. Uh, product knowledge. I thought I would just talk a little bit about, I kind of forgot to ask anybody. I've had a busy week, but I thought I would talk about gift giving. And I know we talked about the gifts to dinner last time or a couple times ago, but I, so I want to talk about that in a minute, but I wanted to show you this gift that I know a lot of you do. Um, I'm still selling it for $12 because I knew that they were going to increase in price. So I bought a bunch of them before they went from $1.99 to, what are they, $3.99? Yeah, they doubled in price. I should tell you, I actually sold it, like four of them last or on Friday or Saturday. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, um, I'm selling these for $12. Next, um, next winter, I'll have to do $14. But still a great idea, taking pre-orders. Raise your hand if you do that. I haven't done it yet, but yeah. And I do, this year I'll do the beer bread and a soup. And then Jane, my sister's like, well, why don't you do the twisty grams and a butterscotch chip or twisty grams and the salted butterscotch cheese ball. And you're taking pre-orders. So that means that you know how many you're going to sell, right? You don't have to stock up and then go, what the heck am I going to do with these twisty grams? So any questions on that? Sure. Do you use an actual big bag of the Tristy grams? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not, you know, we're technically not supposed to sell I, I sample, know. even though the dips to dinner has that, but we're not supposed to. So yes, I, yes, okay. I use the retail because you're making that. And then I don't know, did anybody see that video that they made me do on the tastefully simple independent consultant page? It was really good. First try, man. Um, I'm like, <laughs> I don't have time for this, but anyway, um, Raise your hand if you have this in the house. Like, do you have this at your house? R keep it raised if you sold some. Have you guys sold the dips to dinner? Yeah, so I don't even need to sell you on it. But, you know, at my event I just had or my parties, if you saw that video on the Tastefully Simple Independent Consultant page, bring it to life. You know, tell them about it. Oh my gosh, my favorite, this is what I said, this is my favorite new product. And, um, and show them, because otherwise it doesn't, it doesn't jump off the shelf at your part at your party mm -hmm. or at your event. So you just got to show a tip. Dinner. And the 12th one is a dessert. For 30, you know, with shipping, it's $33 and 34 cents. So I'm just like $33. People are buying them for gifts. Like some people are buying three of them. Some people have bought five. I have some people that just bought it for themselves because guess what? 12 different products for $33 or mm -hmm. Depending on what you're at, if you're at a party, it's 28 night. You know what I'm saying? $29. What a good deal. So I would just encourage you. Any questions on the dip to dinner? Is that, are you able to promote those at the vendor events pretty good? I haven't sold one yet. I sold probably 12 of them at my two and a half day event, Sarah. I had to talk about it. Okay. You know, I had to have to, I, it, it doesn't jump off the shelf. Right. I have to, you know, I invite people into my booth and I might talk about what I'm sampling or whatever. Um, and then I'll say, I got to show you my favorite new product for Christmas. I say Christmas, I can, and I will. And, um, and then I bring them over and go, oh my gosh. So Sarah, you got to bring it to life. Otherwise it would probably, yeah. Just like at I'm my party. I wonder if I should have some on hand for the vendor events because I have like five vendor events coming up. Yeah. I mean, I'm selling them. Okay. Are you selling them on hand, Sherry, or orders? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. No, I sold, like I said, 12 over the weekend or 14. Awesome. And especially now, but you got to mm -hmm. talk about it. it you're not going to sell it if you don't talk about it because they're they're not going to. And then the price point, you have to say what it costs. $29.99 or like I have mine late. Oh, this one isn't. But, um, you know, they every, have everything marked that includes the shipping. 
So you, you got to tell them the price and go, oh my gosh, 12 products, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's cute. It's priced right. And it's got 12 wonderful products. So, but you bring it to life. So, yeah. And it's in a box. Quite a few already. Already. That's nice. Oh, what? You go first, Sarah. Yeah. It's in a box already. So you just have to put a bowl on it and it's wrapped. Exactly. It's super cute. What were you going to say, Ange? I just said, I've actually been selling quite a few in my online parties. Are you, what are you doing, Angie? Are you just, um, I made a video and then I've been just kind of using their stuff too, but I bumped it up a little bit. So and you share the video. Um, yeah, I could. Okay. Yeah, 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 send me an page. email. Cause uh, otherwise it's on uh, Canva and then I'll just download it. But okay. if I, I don't think if I do it to Facebook, you guys can use it. So I have okay. to send it through send messenger. Email. Yeah. Just send okay. me a message. Okay. Have any, have any of you, I see that our speaker's not on here yet, so I'm going to keep talking about this. Um, have any of you seen the video they have on Get Social, kind of where it's the, I, I could download it, but I couldn't like send it on Messenger because it was too big. Do you know what I'm talking about? I haven't watched it's those one. images. It's a video, and it actually came from Kim Leopardo's daughter, the concept where they like quickly show each one. So it's really for dips awesome. to dinner yeah 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 i just downloaded it from social share i mm. saw one of my somebody on my team posted it. i don't know if it was katie or tanya or did it did it work on your party then not on my party i just downloaded it right now like while we're talking it really <laughs> no, sorry i don't think it really shows what it is it's too quick it doesn't okay. yeah yeah, you well, can't read the recipes, but you, I mean, it shows each packet and then it opens it. But it doesn't shows, even show the dinner side. And I didn't watch it all the way through. Okay. All right. Well, here is our speaker. She is joining us. So we are going to switch gears because she's got lots to share. And we're going to talk sponsoring. Adrian just came off of her own team meeting and so she's hopping on. There she is. Adrienne Swanson is in the house. Yay. Thanks. Well, Adrienne, we are excited to hear what you have to share on sponsoring, but I form I first want to like formally introduce you. So Adrienne Swanson is here with us and she Adrienne, tell us where you live again. You're in St. Louis, Missouri. I knew that. I knew the that. middle of the country. You're like <laughs> smack dab in the middle. And a little bit about her beautiful family. She's been married for 17 years, has a 15-year-old son who loves sports and is a goalie in soccer, and her 13-year-old daughter who cheers and models. Wow, that's awesome. Um, Adrian has been with Taste Play Simple for 11 years. Isn't that crazy? 11 years. And she, if you recognize her name, which I know many of you do, has been number two in sponsoring for the entire company in the last two years. So she's a natural to talk to us about sponsoring. Um, Her favorite part of the company is having other women cheer you on and support you and your business. I wish I wouldn't have had, I wish I wouldn't have had more of this. I wish I would have had more of this when I was younger. Sorry, obviously I didn't prove this. (laughs) The gr- <laughs> it's growth- probably my writing let's be no, honest <laughs> no. the growth mindset is key to living a happy life boy I agree to that um and a fun fact I train oh this is really cool I trained and took care of chimpanzees and baboons in South Carolina when I graduated college like, how did you get that crazy job? Because <laughs> I'm insane, apparently. No, um, I, uh, there was a company that was, like, I talked, I studied in Australia for a year, and this girl told me all about it, that it was in South Carolina, and you could train animals. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. And um, yeah, it was, I ended up working there for like nine months, and I took care of a chimp, like a baby chimp the whole time I was there. <laughs> oh, how fun is that? I mean, I think of horses and dogs, but chimpanzees and baboons well anyway that that's that's a fun fact that nobody knows about you so super (laughs) cool so I'm gonna let Adrian talk about her sponsoring success and then we will leave a couple minutes at the end we're gonna try to be done by 8 30 but leave a few minutes at the end so if you have any questions just write them down or ask or we're pretty informal here so whatever goes but go for it girlfriend 
Oh, well, thank you guys so much. And thank you for letting me hop on a little late. I had my team meeting right before this. So I knew I was going to be a little behind. So thank you guys. And thank you for asking me to be here, Sherry. I appreciate it. Um, you guys, I love sponsoring. Um, I know it was said at one of our, um, I think it was a couple conferences ago that, and it was by Brittany that, you know, the best, the best product in our catalog is the opportunity. And it is the truth because the best thing we can offer other people is to, you know, have financial freedom on their own, like be able to give themselves a raise, you know, be able to hang out with the motors, this, you know, growth mindset, like all of those things we have to offer. And, um, I know you guys all love tastefully simple for a different reason for maybe the food or maybe, um, the fun or the conference or whatever it is, like all of that is part of that, uh, that product, that opportunity. And so I always look at all the things that people love and all the reasons you guys are here. And that is part of that product. So there is a lot of benefits to our opportunity. So I just want you guys to, I had to retrain my brain instead of being afraid to offer it, to realize that like, this is the best thing we got. So I should ask everyone. And so when people always ask me for my, you know, words of advice, I just want you to know, I'm not kidding when I say I ask everybody. <laughs> if somebody calls me and is like, I'm out of garlic, garlic, I need some. I'm like, hey, you love our products. Have you ever thought about doing what I do? I mean, that's simple. And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, well, would you want to know more? And they're like, no. And I'm like, okay, I'll get you garlic, garlic and move on. Like, I don't take any of it personally. I don't. Um, in the beginning, I used to take a lot of it personally. And I had to realize that like, it's like um, offering water. When you walk into somebody's house, do you want water? No. Cause you're like, why? No. And then like five minutes later, you're like, well, crap, now I want water. Right. Like, but if nobody ever offered it, you wouldn't even know you wanted it. So, um, I kind of look at that for our opportunity too, is like, realize that you have to offer it for people even to know that it's a possibility. And then sometimes they have to mull on it or sometimes their life has to change. So I never quit offering it. Like I even have people where I'm like, okay, so I've probably asked you a thousand times since I've known you, but has anything changed? No. Okay. Here's your garlic garlic, you know? Um, so I just try to always remember, like, we don't know what's happening in someone's life behind closed doors. It's always different. So you never know when life has changed and we just have an awesome thing to offer them. And who's going to be sad that you thought of them and thought that they were amazing enough to do what you do. You know, so I had to look at it that way instead of worrying about like if they would think I'm um, and that's my other favorite thing to say is when people are like, well, what if they think I'm pushy? If you think that you're worried about being pushy, then you're not pushy. So that's that. I mean, if you are worried about being pushy, you're not pushy because the pushy people don't care. <laughs> and that's, so I always say if you're even worried about it, you're fine. Um, and I also had to kind of realize uh, early on too that like you have to come from a place of abundance. I know Jill speaks on that a lot, but um, the scarcity mentality can be, you know, one of those things that's very hard. Um, we like to go, well, but that's my host. That's my host that does my best parties. And so I don't want to ask her to join because where are my sales going to come from? And I had to realize that like her being on my team, she now has a whole network of people that she probably never invited to a party that she can sell to. And, um, and then she would be on my team expanding Tastefully Simple's name. And there's always more people. What I like to tell people is if you can walk into your local grocery store and you know, if you don't know everyone and they don't buy Tastefully Simple from you, you still have a job. So uh, most people go into Walmart and they don't know half the people there. So you still have a job. So I just try to remember that there's always other people out there who have never heard of it. Like I just did a party this weekend um, for a customer she's been a host of mine multiple times. And she's like, I'm going to invite a bunch of different people. There were like seven people there that had never even heard of Tastefully Simple. And we've been around for 26 years. So I was like, there's always people out there who don't know. So I would always make sure that you're checking your, where you're coming from and realize that there's always plenty of people to get to know and that would love your product. So if somebody wants to join your team, you should definitely let them and don't worry about, you'll find your sales by booking other parties. Um, and I think my last tip, sometimes the numbers, some people are, some people aren't. So some may relate and some may not, but my last big thing that I like to talk to people about is like, I've had some 
consultants on my team say, I like asking one person a month. And this is great. Like asking someone is better than asking that no one, but they also say they want to get to copper. And I'm like, okay, well, if you ask one person a month, it might take you 10 months to get someone because the average is for every 10 people you ask one person might take you up on the offer. So if you really have a goal to move up in leadership, like I realized I had to ask so many more people because like I said, if you're asking one person a month, that's 10 months to get one person. So then it's going to be another 10 months till you get another. So getting to copper could take you a really long time if you're asking one person a month. So um, I, that's when I started going, I made it a challenge to myself to ask one person a day. And that's how I literally started asking everyone because I was like, I have to connect with somebody every business day. I don't do weekends. I like to take stuff. But, um, <laughs> you know, unless I have a party, then of course I'm asking, but, um, it, it sort of like, I look at it like a muscle and the more I started asking the less like, you know, in the beginning, I'd be like all sweaty under my arms and like, oh my God, I'm going to ask this girl to join my team. I'm so nervous. And now it's like, I just don't even think about it being a big deal because I do it every day. Um, so I, I know I talk really fast, but those are like my main tips, <laughs> but I would love to answer any questions or expand on anything that you guys, you know, might have questions about. Awesome, awesome, Adrian. Who's got a question for her? I do, Sherry. Yeah. Um, my one question is, when you get the no, do you just kind of move on or do you say something else? That is an awesome question. So I always use a clarifying question. So like if I said, are you interested in doing what I do? And they say no, I always say like, uh, no, not now or no, not ever. Um, and just to kind of get an idea and also to make them laugh. Um, and then a lot of times then they'll say, well, no, I just like, I don't even know what it entails. You know what I mean? Like you don't even know what they're saying no to. And a lot of times they don't know what they're saying no to. Um, and I think that's the reason I bring it up often as well is because they might worry that saying yes, you're going to like hound them, you know, or whatever. And so I always ask that clarifying question. And then if they are just like, no, not right now, or, I'm not really sure, then I can follow up with another question. And if they say no, not ever, I, I just always say, okay, I'm not gonna ask you for a while, but if something changes, I wanna make sure that you know that I'm here. So I try to make like a joke or I'll ask for a referral. I'll say, okay, well, if you don't want to, do you know anybody who needs extra money or is looking for you know, something to do on the side? So then it kind of takes the pressure off too, if you feel uncomfortable. I always find that asking for a referral then makes it like, oh, it doesn't have to be me. She's just, you know, wanting yep. to grow her business. You know what I mean? So yep. my question, the reason I asked that is I have a girl that's having a party and in their area, I'm in Northwest Minnesota. Uh -huh. um, it's kind of by the Canadian border where this person lives. There's nobody. And okay. people have been joking on her party that she should do it. So I'm waiting until she closes and I'm going to talk to her about it. And I mean, that's, so the only thing I always recommend is asking multiple times during a party. And okay. like, I usually ask at the beginning before it even starts. I say, Hey, have you ever thought about doing what I do? Because this could be your opening party. And if they say no, then I'm like, okay, well just watch how it rolls. And if you're interested at any point, let me know. And then like, after the party happens, I'm like, so what'd you think of it? You know? And if they're like, Oh yeah, it was super fun. Then I'm like, okay, well, again, you know, is it something you want to do? And then when I close, I say you would have made X amount of dollars from this party. Is it something, oh, and you have this many bookings, is it something you'd want to do? And okay. the reason I do that is kind of what I just said is that, um, I feel like people get worried about saying yes right away because they just don't know what it means. Like, you know, when you walk into a store and somebody goes, Hey, do you need help? And you're like, no, God, because what are you going to do? Follow me around and hold a bunch of ugly shirts up to me that I don't want. Like you get, you panic. And so okay. I think sometimes like when, you know, the, when, you know, the person, when the person hears you ask that their first reaction is no, just like yours is when you're in a store and then you're looking around and you're like, well, crap, now I need help finding that black shirt. So, Hey, yeah. Can I borrow you? You know, like we yeah. just, our knee jerk reaction is no. So asking them multiple times very lightly. So basically, 
never is, you know, like it's better to ask earlier than not. Yeah, right? I think okay. so personally, okay. because it lets them sit on it a little bit. And I have had hosts change their mind mid party before. Okay. So, okay. Thank you. Of course. Now, obviously none of what I'm saying is right. It's just my crazy way of doing things. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it works. <laughs> Who else has a question? I'll ask Adrian. You say you ask one a day. Like, tell us more. Like, just like on private message, a text, or like, who do you? How do you know who to ask? I mean, like I said, it's just like if I have a host, clearly I ask. Um, uh, and I really try to connect out. Like when I'm doing online parties, I realized a while ago during COVID that like, I wasn't connecting with people the way I did in home. So mm -hmm. I started trying to message people on the side, like connect with them. in one of the posts they make, like if I make an air fryer post and they're like, I love my air fryer. I respond to them on the party, but I also private message them and say, oh my gosh, what's one of your favorite things to make in the air fryer or something like that to like start that conversation up. So, um, you know, I kind of use all of that. And like I said, when somebody just calls and is like, you know, I do a lot of customer care. It's very important to me. So when somebody's like, oh yeah, I've been waiting to order from you. I'm like, you wouldn't have to, if you joined, you could order. <laughs> so, you know, like I said, I use it a lot of, um, you know, a fun way, but I also just kind of, you know, they don't know, like I realized how many people don't even know I, would have parties for them. They just thought they ordered from me because we are in our heads and we do this every day. So we know we have an opportunity and we know we have parties to offer, but there are people who don't even know what direct sales is that have never heard of Mary Kay, Tasteless, Simple Tupperware or anything. So um, I forget that there are people like that out there, but there are more than you think there are. So I have to like remind myself that what seems repetitive to me is not repetitive to them. And even if it is, people have to hear things 10 times before they actually hear it. So, I mean, what's agree, the big agree. deal? So what advice do you have someone that maybe is sitting here, that maybe is listening to the recording and go, you know, that sounds really good for you, Adrian, because you're so good at it. But, you know, I'd like to sponsor, but I'm just going to see what happens. What advice do you have to, because I think a lot of consultants think that. It's like, well, yeah, I'd like to have a team, but I'm just going to kind of see what happens. Uh, intention and focus is what will make you successful. So, I mean, if you don't have the, if you don't set a goal for yourself, like in everything. So I don't even mean this in sponsoring. If you go to a party and you're like, let's see what happens. I always go with a goal and yes, sometimes I hit it. Sometimes I blow it out of the water and other times I don't get anywhere close to it. And I'm like, Oh, that kind of stinks. But <laughs> if I didn't have a goal to start with, I'm not shooting for anything. And so I really recommend, and that's why I set the goal to ask somebody every day is because if I didn't, and I just said, well, I'll see when I ask, I knew it wasn't intentional. And if I'm not intentional in my business, my business isn't going to grow the way I want it to. So like whatever your goal is, if it's sales, if it's sponsoring, if it's leader development, um, whatever it is, like if you don't have a goal written on paper in front of you, and let me tell you, I would tell you when I started this, I was like, I'm not writing goals down. That's ridiculous. Okay. So I, if you're sitting there saying that I get it, I'm right there with you. But once I started doing that, my world changed because I realized that your brain moves towards your goals. And so your brain is really smart and it's going to send you things like you should call this person or this person had a party once you should connect with them. Like it, it wants you to hit that goal. And so random signals will just fire. And if you listen to them, you can be pretty productive. <laughs> I love it, Adrian. Other questions or any questions, big or small? No? Well, um, Adrian, I know if you guys do have some questions, you can ask them to me and I will field them to Adrian. Um, very inspiring and love your energy and your passion for what you do and that is why you're so successful adrian well and everybody can be like you said it doesn't take a certain personality it takes intention i mean that's really what it is so just it, really it, set it, your goal yeah. and like because people have said that like oh well you're bubbly but i know tons of people who aren't and they have you know even bigger teams because they are very intentional about what they're doing so 
I just agree. And Adrian, I want to end. I want to end with this. I remember that you said it took you like three or four years before you really started doing much. Was tastefully simple. Is that not correct? Yeah, no, that's correct. I what couldn't... what you know? So you've been eleven years, but so what turned the the knob for you or whatever? Why did you decide? You know, I'm well, going to do something more. So it was it. So actually, I was with Homemade Gourmet for those of you that don't know. And so the first four years at Homemade Gourmet, I did couldn't even make the quarter. Like I was barely making the quarterly minimums, and I was going to quit every other month. Just so you know. And my husband was like, ah, just keep doing it. Whatever. You'll be fine. I have a good husband. And, um, they announced a trip, uh, an Alaskan cruise. And I just, so I had intention. I wanted to go and my life changed because I just said, I'm going like, there was no if, ands or buts. I was like, and I put that tracker up on my fridge and my kids and my husband, they had little portholes, you know, like you had to fill in and they'd be like, why haven't you filled one in? What have you been doing? Like, I mean, I had my whole family riding me for this goal. And so it was once I had intention and I shared it with other people that could motivate me. I haven't missed a trip since. (laughs) Yeah. So I think sometimes it's just making the decision that that's what you want. And if you can make the decision, whatever it is, big or small, like I tell my team, I'm like, if you want to hit the 500 club and get a hundred dollars to buy yourself a new pair of hot shoes, if that's your goal, just have it in front of you and, and make it happen. So I think it's, like I said, just creating that goal and making your life intentional towards hitting it. I love it, Adrian. Well, thanks again so much for joining us. Fantastic. Thank you for having me. And I know you've been on the Zoom for a while, so feel free <laughs> to exit. <laughs> but thank you so much. And anybody, if you do have a question for Adrian, let me know and I'll pass it on to her. So I'm going to stop the recording. If any team members want to stick on, if you have any questions or anything, let me know. Stay on.